so tonight what I wanted to talk about, we're going to be working on some stuff from Psy Control. Uh, I've talked with some of you guys about this before. One of the big aspects from my style of Jiu Jitsu is I'm really lazy and I don't actually like to do any work. So preferably for me, if you guys could just lay there and let me submit you, that would be perfect. It really gets annoying when people do this garbage where like they actually use proper technique and make good choices to get away from things that I'm doing because then I have to work harder. So one of the ways that I like to solve that is by uh, seriously punishing people and putting them in extreme amounts of pain as a result of them making good decisions. Thank you, by the way, for volunteering to make the audio. So what we're going to do today is we're going to work from side control. Let's slide down this way just a little bit. So we're going to work from side control, and ideally from side control, I would like to get in here, I can go you know, arm under the head, whatever. I want to get my far side underhook in place. And I kind of like to get him flattened out and keep him flattened out. What most people in Eladio's position are going to want to do from here is shrimp, get to their side, move their hips out, put a frame in place on my neck, create space. So I'm going to use that against him to put him into bad positions so that I can do terrible things to him from there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start this off by kind of baiting him a little bit. We're going we're gonna to be working from cradles today. So we're going to be working from kind of a, for at least for jujitsu purposes, a non-standard control position. I'll start this off by catching my far side underhook. And then rather than going under the head, I'm going to go around the head. And then I'm just going to put, I can either put a three finger grip or a gable grip or something together. But I want to go right here on the back of his shoulder. I'm going to pinch this up. I'm going to put my grip together. And then I want to turn his head to the side and then just start driving it. You can see immediately he's starting to react to that because he doesn't want to continue staying here. If he does, then this elbow in his throat is eventually going to tap him out. No one in a live role is actually going to tap out to that, but it's going to force him to move. Okay? So what he's going to want to do when I lift my head up, you see right now I've got his arm on the far side, he's most likely going to bring that to the near side so that he can start framing. All right? And he's going to shrimp his hips and then start moving away so that he can get his guard back. So when he brings his knees and his head somewhat close together so that he can shrimp away from me, because that's kind of the key to what makes the shrimp work, I'm going to use that against him and I'm going to transfer into a cradle. So I've got my far side underhook going under the shoulder, pinning, going over, locking my three finger grip together, and then I'm just digging into his face. He is going to frame. Now when he starts to move, what I'm gonna do is I wanna get my head around this frame. So I'm gonna get my head down here underneath of his elbow. Go ahead. I'm coming around his head, around his top leg, and then I'm gonna bring my hands together I'm going to put a grip in place and you see I've gotten up off of my knees. I'm on my feet so I can drive into him because I want a lot of you to carry my body weight. All I'm using is just a simple S grip. This hides my fingers from him. I can use a gable grip or something like that. But if I do this, this leaves my fingers exposed so that he can attack them and pull them apart. Just put the hands together, S grip, that works just fine. So I'm in here, I'm working, I'm pulling him in. He starts framing, I slide by, wrap the head, wrap the knee, cradle, get up on my toes, and get ready to drive in. Now I'm in what in wrestling would be referred to as a near side cradle. That's going to be our starting control position, and it is important that his arm is outside. We're going to discuss options in a bit for if his arm gets trapped on the inside, but for right now, we want to use his attempt to frame against him, get our head around that, so that we end up in a cradle with the arm on the outside, and then we're gonna start working our first submission from there. So pair up, work that, just get to the cradle, get comfortable holding that, getting up on your toes to drive into him, hold the guy there. Guy on bottom, resist a little bit, kind of push your legs apart, make the guy on top work to keep that cradle in place, and then we'll come back and we'll start working some really horrible submissions from there. So one thing I did forget to mention before, once you get your hands together, if you need to tighten things up, 
pinch your elbows together. I'm going to take all the slack out as much as I can. I can switch off and use like a butterfly grip or a gable grip if I want to tighten up. But honestly, just pinching the elbows together usually does it. This ends up being a great control position because if you're actually up off of your knees and you're on your toes and driving in and pinching, it's difficult for the opponent on bottom to generate the power that they need to push out of that. And it keeps their head and their knees somewhat together and they're carrying most of your body weight. So it's a very uncomfortable position. This isn't used a whole lot in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu because you can't pin people to win, but pins in wrestling still work extremely well in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu because they can still hold people down and make them uncomfortable and make them have to carry your weight. All right, so let's now work on the awful things that we can do to them. And we're gonna start with the butcher shop joke. That, that expression on his face, that's, that's what you're looking for. Right now. The butcher shop choke is going to be most effective if I catch my cradle with his arm on the outside. If his arm is on the inside, he's going to have an easier time blocking this. We're going to have some options in a bit for what we're going to do at that point. But I'm in here in side control. I set this up. He frames. He goes to shrimp. I set my cradle up and I've got his arm on the outside, okay? So I'm gonna turn here just a little bit. So I am like the, and I'm squeezing together. If you guys over here, you guys might wanna move over a little bit so you can see what's going on. I'll do multiple angles of this, but I'm piked up and I'm driving into him and I'm pinching my elbows together as much as I can. That is causing him discomfort and it's making him want to push his legs apart so that he can free up some space in between his knee and his face. I'm going to use that against him. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pinch my elbows together, I'm gonna squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And when I start to feel that counter from him, that response where he starts pushing his legs out, I'm going to use that by extending my arms out and I'm gonna create space in between the two of us and then I'm going to fill it with my knee in his face. Pinch, fight. He starts to push apart, just created space. This knee comes inside, right on his face is it. And then work on that knee. I'm driving my knee directly into the side of his neck. I can go from this side, I can go on top. Anywhere in there is where I'm trying to get my knee to. Be careful when you're doing this because if you do this really fast and then just bring this straight up, you may well actually hit the guy in the face. We don't want to do that. We're actually just trying to choke him. So down here, cradle, extend. I'm releasing my cradle just so I can show you what I'm doing. Drive this in, lay it down across his neck, and then drive in sweep. So the choke is coming from the arm around the back of the neck is catching the carotid on this side. The knee is catching the carotid on this side. And then I just squeeze and lay my knee down. That's spinched a little bit. So I've caught my cradle. Pinched in here, pinching him in, release. And pike out. Knee comes inside, lay it across the throat, and then just sink into it while you squeeze. It's a butcher shop choke. Questions on that? Anybody need to see it again? All right, give it a try. Be careful when you're sliding your knee in. Do this slow. We're not actually trying to knee people in the face. Knee goes to the neck not to the nose. All right, so this next move is going to work whether the arm is in or out. It doesn't really matter as much on the arm position, but we're gonna to continue to work this from setting up the near side cradle with the arm on the outside, just because if we land this with the arm on the outside and we don't get the submission off of this, it's gonna make the next transition easier if the arm is already on the outside. That may not make sense yet, but you'll see what I mean in just a minute. So, we're back down in side control. We're gonna do the exact same setup. Ladio is framing, pushing into me. I'm moving off. 
and then I'm setting up my crane. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bunch the cradle together. His big counter to this, when his head and his knees start to come together, is he wants to push away so he can create space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some additional blocks in place to make it next to impossible for him to do that because he's going to have to push his way through my entire body. So here's how I'm going to do this. I caught my cradle. I see this leg dangling here. It's the top leg. I'm going to, if you look at my hips, they are arced up, pointing into him right now, I'm switching over, and I'm stepping. I'm grabbing that leg, and then as I grab a hold of this leg that I've got trapped in the cradle, I'm changing my hips and moving them in the opposite direction. So now I've got his leg trapped in between both of mine. This other leg that's high up by his head is then going to back around and catch his heel so that now I've got both of his, both of my legs in between his and his foot is all the way up by his head. Now your ability to get a tap from here is going to be pretty much entirely dependent on his flexibility. A lot of you is pretty flexible so I may not actually tap him, but with guys who are less flexible, really all I have to do is just crunch this together and continue to squeeze and you may get a tap. That tap could come, depending on his level of flexibility, either from hamstring crushing the other. It could come from the compression in his chest and the inability to breathe. If you are really nasty and horrible with this, when you crunch this together, you are going to drive his knee right into his nose and you may well tap him out just by driving his knee into his nose and creating a, a lot of physical pain for him. It just kind of depends on how much of a jerk you want to be. But bunching the cradle up creates a situation that is incredibly difficult for him to get out of. It's very painful and it's really, really hard to breathe. So if you're looking for a place to just kind of hang out for a little while, lay some pressure down on the guy and uh, make him not be able to breathe for a while, Bunching the cradle is an excellent way to go, and you may well get a tap with it. So, one more time. I've set up here in side control. Ladio is framing, pushing that off, grabbing my cradle. I'm up on my toes. My hips angle towards his legs. I step over, grab. As I grab this, I switch my hips towards his head. I back step. Catch that heel, and now I've bunched the cradle. From here, I just continue to compress, drive that all forward towards his head. See what you get. If you get a tap, great. Then we get a finish right then and there. If not, then I'll come back in a minute and I'll show you a path that we can use to progress from there. Questions on that? All right, three, two, one.